Hi, everybody. I'm Cheryl Chris from Movie Guides Backstage Pass, and this is Coffee and Conversation with Cats and Crowns, Mark Hall. Hey, how's it going, Cheryl? Hey, Mark, how are you? I am doing so good. Wow, Mark, new album, new tour, and a new movie out about Cats and Crowns. We're going to talk about all of that, but first I want to start at the very beginning. What mm -hmm. was Mark Hall like as a little boy? Have you always loved Jesus and Jesus music? Well, I would say uh, if if the, you're interviewing me as a little boy, you would just see me going. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I was just all over the place. And uh, I think my dad got saved when I was about seven. Um, and that's when uh, music started changing. I remember as a little kid, uh, we all kind of had this soft rock thing going. It was always going in the house. And uh, and all of a sudden, man, the, the music changed. My dad started singing in the choir. And uh, suddenly it was the Gaithers. It was Dallas Home. It was uh, Sandy Patty. Um, artists like that. And uh, I remember the song Rise Again by Dallas Home was such a huge song to him. So music changed. That was one of the first big changes in my house was seeing that and seeing a change in dad. So I was thinking about your story. Is it a miracle that God used a little boy, Mark Hall, who struggled with ADD, dyslexia, and almost quit Bible college, and mm -hmm. God turned him into a man who writes songs for the glory of God that reaches millions around the world? Yeah, it's been an amazing journey. It's been a journey that at no point can I point back to the spot where I just rocked. And I think that's very important. Um, I, I don't, I think God uses less than ordinary people because he knows we're not going to get a big head about it. Um, because I know who's who in the zoo here. I know at the end of the day, uh, on my best day, what I can accomplish. And I don't think, I don't think it's that big a deal. So, um, so what, what I, what I've tried to do is just bloom where I'm planted and just whatever the gifts I do have, give them back to him. And, and he's used that. And, and that, that's what I want people to see in my life. Fast forward to today, Cast and Crowns is a Grammy winning, multi-platinum selling band that sold over 13 million albums. And you're celebrating the band's 20th anniversary with your brand new Life Songs album and tour. Um, you're doing some really, really great things. Tell us how this album and this tour is different. Uh, this tour has been so much fun because we're doing just theaters and that's been so much more intimate, you know, maybe 2,500, 3,000 or so. And, and we've got an, uh, an orchestra with us. So uh, there's about uh, 10 string players behind us and they're amazing. And uh, we've, you know, strings have always been a part of crowns having melody in the band. Uh, and I'm just a string guy. I, 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 I think of my songs when I'm writing I think of them cin cinematically. I see it. So it's kind of like a movie in my head. And, and uh, strings just create such a a connection with people to that, that you know something about the heart is coming, you know, the way the music sounds. And uh, so uh, the, having it live in the room with us has been amazing. You have a brand new movie out celebrating 20 years of Cast and Crowns music and ministry. Mm -hmm. The title of the movie is the essence of who Cast and Crowns and Mark Hall is. It's called Home by Sunday. Can you explain? You know, first of all, they had to, they had to, I had to, they fought me a lot on this because I was like, man, we're not a movie, dude. <laughs> we don't have any, we don't have any car chases in, the, in our story. <laughs> well, I don't get this, you know, and, and, um, but I really love documentaries. And I, and I told them that if you if you make it about the songs and you we tell the stories of real people and, and what God's done in their lives because of the songs that he led us write, um, if, if that's the area that we go, we'll do it. And uh, and, and I feel like they really stay true to that. So you, you get to hear our story and, and a lot of the things that God's brought us through. But you also get to see songs and the fact that that we're pointing people to Jesus and and they're they're getting there. So that's pretty awesome. 
The movie highlights two decades on the road with your wife, Melanie, your four children and homeschooling, and your whole family had to be all in on this. Tell yeah. us what life on the road is like. It, it was tough because when we first set out on the road, Zoe was about, uh, I don't know, five months old. I'm not sure. It, it was pretty young. Um, and no, it couldn't be because she was she was born uh, the day that where the body was playing on the radio. So when we had out on tour, she's she's a little one. And uh, and we got all three kids at the time and we hit the road together and we had no no way to know how it was going to go. There weren't a lot of people to call and say, how did you do this with your family? You know, but since then, uh, many, many, many artists have come to us and said, how did you do this with your family? And I, I feel like some of the biggest changes that we've seen happen in Christian music is people wanting to know, how did you stay plugged into your church? And how did you stay with your family? And uh, it's expensive. It's going to cost you. But I'm not going to let ministry take me away from my kids. We're going to do it together. And, uh, and that's why we've done it. That's why music is powerful to me because it can point us to the Father. Mark, you have written so many inspiring hit songs. Your songs go from your heart to the pen, to the paper, to the people. Mm -hmm. Where does that inspiration come from? It comes from what I'm teaching. Um, it starts off as, as a, a Bible study or a devotion or something I'm walking with a family through here, conversations I'm having right here in front of my my desk here with just sitting across from a, a student who's going through hard things and, and the truths that come out of that, because the, the big lie in our head is that we're the only ones dealing with what we're dealing with, but we're not. So, so when you're in youth ministry, you have to talk about the hard stuff. You can't, you can't just have a sermon and go off to your office. You're, you're down there with them, you know? And so when they're questioning their faith, you've got to talk about it. And when they don't understand why healing didn't show up the way they wanted it to, you got to talk about it. And and that's where a lot of our songs come from, is talking about the hard stuff. And what does worship look like in a storm? What happens, you know, when you're praying, healing comes this way and it doesn't come this way. Did it still happen? And, 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 and walking with them through seeing that God always shows up, even if he didn't show up the way you wanted. And uh, so these songs are just about real life. God always shows up, even if it's different than you expected. That's right. That's right. I love, Mark, that even though you're a superstar, you're still a youth pastor and you've spent your whole life guiding and encouraging and coaching young people for 20 years. What would you say to a young person or really anybody that says, I believe in God, I, I'm going to go to heaven, but I'm too busy. I can do all that God stuff later. Uh, talk to me about the importance and the urgency of living a life with Jesus versus living a life without Jesus. Yeah. Well, I, I think kids have been saying that since Jesus. You know, everybody's been saying, oh, I've got time. You know, I said that. Everybody kind of thinks that way. Um, I, I think that's just being young and immature and not really knowing and thinking you're Superman. And, and uh, you know, um, I get it. Um, the problem is most adults that you talk to who finally did surrender to Jesus are now having to overcome and walk through and deal with all the things that happened before they were 20. Most of the, the struggles that we have as adults are because of the decisions we made then. And that is the urgency, you know, don't, uh, you know, I want, it's kind of like when you, you know, when uh, your parents would say, you don't need to do that because I did that. I don't want you to do that. And, and you would always say, I need to learn from my own mistakes. You know, we said that because that's such a dumb thing to say, but you say it, you know, you don't really want to do that. But, um, but you think that because we have this weird little idea that our idea for our life is going to be more fun and better than what Jesus has. And, and, that's just because you don't know him yet. and uh, But when you start walking with Jesus and discovering your gifts, uh, you start discovering wisdom, you start discovering how friendship works, you're having 
having the, the friendships that you have right now, if you're saying you're not going to walk with Jesus until later, you're robbing your friends. You're not just robbing you. Your, your friends are making life decisions and things that they're going to do forever. And you were there and your advice either helped them or hurt them, you know? So whether or not I'm going to walk with God or not is, is going to affect everything. You know, how your kids are going to grow up, who you're going to marry. Is Jesus important? Well, if he's not important, then you're going to be in a marriage where Jesus matters to one and doesn't matter to the other. And that kid is growing up in the battle zone. And um, so it's an arrogant thing to say, but it's also something I totally understand because it's just because we don't know, you know? And so my prayer is for their hearts, that God just penetrates their hearts. And I can't tell you how many times I've prayed, Lord, invade their thoughts. Just invade their thoughts right now with how big you are and how much you love them. And, um, and It's kind uh, of like I can lead my life the hard way and learn the hard way or the easy way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is the hard way. Sounds like you get to pick. And, and uh, freedom is not what you think it's going to be. You know, it's not. And uh, it, it'd be way better to to be in a friendship, an everyday walking around friendship, friendship with a God who will never be surprised by anything that happens, who's already standing at the end of your life looking back on it. Mark, the Bible talks about singing and praising God more than 400 times. When you look out into the crowd, what does it feel like to see the audience singing scriptures and words that you have written and talk about the power of scripture uh, to change hearts, minds, and souls and eventually the world for God. I talked with um, a bunch of songwriters recently and I told them, I said, guys, there aren't a lot of people walking around right now humming sermons, but they're humming your songs. So you better make sure because people unfortunately will build a lot of their theology off of their music. And um, so for me, when I see people singing my songs, that that's a weight of responsibility on me to make sure that God's word is what these songs are pointing to. Our songs are not the point. They're just pointing to the point. And um, that's huge for me. When I see them, uh, before I record a song, uh, not only am I putting it against God's word, I've, I've given it to several pastors. And I'm saying, hey, check my oil here. You know, because somebody's going to be singing this song later and decide God's going to do what I just said. And so I don't, I don't need to be saying Jesus is like an abracadabra word and life's just going to get better because you said Jesus. Uh, that's a terrifying thing to think about. Um, so uh, you, you can edit that out if you need to. But uh, but uh, for me, uh, I've got to stay true to God's word so people see uh, scriptures the point. Mark, you battled cancer a few years back. I'm so glad that you're doing well. How did having cancer change your writing, your music, and your perspective on life? You know, the big lesson that came from, from cancer for me is that um, I'm, I'm pretty good at giving. I'm pretty good at loving people through things. And um, that's something I've done all my life. I'm not very good at receiving. I never really had to face that, that truth. But when I found out about cancer, I just started backing up. I, I didn't know what to do, but I didn't want people to know. And I told myself there were some really good reasons for that. Oh, I don't need people worrying. It's just pride. I had so much pride. I didn't know how to hurt uh, like that or be scared in front of people. And God really had to show that to me. And uh, and, and I, I, had, I remember telling people in my church, this is going on and telling some people in Christian radio that I trusted. And and it just sort of blew up. And you started seeing this pray for Mark. Uh, we went through a, a, a town and it was on a billboard. Uh, pray for me. And I just, it was really humbling. And so the lesson I learned is that, you know, this big church I've been preaching so much about, you got to let the church be the church when you're hurting. You got to let them in. And, and people aren't going to say the right thing. And they're going to say, you know, 
God's got this, you know, all these little things that people say, because <laughs> you feel like, you feel like as a, as a believer, you feel like you've got to fix the problem with your little words. And, and, and I've, I've always talked kids through that part. Like you don't have to know what to say. You just love them. You just be there. And I wrote a song called love them like Jesus about that. And, um, but I hadn't written a song yet on <laughs> being being too too strong to let people love you and uh, so man god just really got all over me about that and just letting people in and letting them pray for you so mark we're living in confusing times we're told what is truth is a lie and what's a lie is truth um why is it so important to speak god's truth to the world uh, what's been missing is the love part because we speak the truth in love, and love earns you the right to speak the truth. And with social media, we, we're like throwing rocks of truth. And when you throw in truth, it never hits who you're aiming at. Never. It, it just hurts the wrong person. And for, for me, I feel like right now, um, 2020, everybody went home and locked in their house and got their favorite brand of news, and just got mad. And people weren't people anymore. We we started thinking about situations and issues. And it's so easy to get mad at issues. It's so easy to, to think about something on the other side of the world and what they need to do, you know? And and um, I, I think the more we're in the word, the more we see that uh, Jesus was about people. And everything he said and taught was against modern culture, totally against it. But Everything he said was for people. And because they knew he loved them, he could tell them the truth. And I think what we've got to start doing is stop thinking so much with our thumbs and, and start thinking with our, our hearts and let God guide our words. Um, truth is getting lost in anger right now. So uh, I think the more we love people and the more we're transparent. And I'm going to spend most of the concert this weekend explaining to the crowd why i'm not a big deal i'm gonna i'm gonna explain to them dyslexia and add and messing up and falling down because we've got to be transparent about our weakness so people will listen and you gotta love people uh, so they'll listen so the truth has never stopped being the truth it's it's the church and our delivery that, that that's got to change a little bit absolutely um, for our last point, would you like to tell us your favorite Bible verse right now or some words, leave us with some words of encouragement for our audience? Well, one that just pops in my head, I, I don't, I, I'm so bad at having favorites. It's usually just what's in my head at the moment. So what was in my head just then as we were saying that was James. He said, you know, if you, we, we should all be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. And uh, being quick to listen isn't listening faster. It's listen, listen to people's hearts. And, and I think that's a, that's a big thing to think about. People's words are usually surface and going to hit your buttons. But if, if you train yourself to be a little quicker to listen to people's hearts, listen past the words, uh, we can love them better. Absolutely. Mark Hall, thank you so much for inspiring millions. Thank you. And to watch more videos like this, go to movieguide.org.